One of the phenomena which had peculiarly attracted my attention was the structure of the human frame, and indeed any animal endued with life. Whence, I often asked myself, did the principle of life proceed? I revolved these circumstances in my mind and determined henceforth to apply myself more particularly to those branches of natural philosophy which relate to physiology. is Major Yuri Gagarin. Radio communication to be established and maintained with him. He's feeling well and conditions in the cabin are normal. The flight of the spaceship is continuing. <laughs> It was on 1961 when, for the first time, the human body dispensed with the physical laws of linear acceleration and crossed the boundaries of Earth's atmosphere. Yuri Gagarin was the first human to accomplish such an intrepid feat, completing an Earth orbit aboard the Vostok 1 spacecraft. Once again, human biology was confronted with extreme environmental conditions. This time, in a relatively distant setting from Earth, thus far only a byproduct of human abstractions. Space environments are considered extreme environments for humans. They demand complex processes of human physiological and psychological adaptation. Stressors such as outer gravity or outer pressure or even ionizing radiation and even changes in day and night cycles demand complex human biological adaptation. So far, it isn't clear if adult humans can biological adapt to space conditions. In effect, and with the exception for the Apollo missions, we humans have not ventured too far from low Earth orbit, approximately 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Reason why long-term physiological and psychological effects of living in space are still unknown. Nevertheless, recent research indicates that major space effects in adult human biology include the decline of almost every body system and accelerated aging. Developmental space biology has been investigating the effects of micro and macro gravity from conception to early postnatal development, including genetic, molecular, cellular, physiological, morphological, and vestibular development processes. Studies have been conducted mostly in flies, sea urchins, fish and amphibians, and mammals such as mice and rats, because these species present homologous genetic and molecular mechanisms to humans. These studies have been conducted on Earth and in the International Space Station. In general, results indicate that altered gravity conditions can modify the structural features of developing bodies, that pregnancy and neonatal development can proceed in micro-G in mammals, and that fertilization and can occur in micro-G in sea urchins, amphibians, and fish. Here is a video footage showing a successful mating in micro-G, a study performed by Japanese researchers showing Japanese Madaka water fish um, mating aboard the International Space Station. 
The male approaches the female, then robs the female with his anal and dorsal fins. So far, Medaka waterfish have been the first Earth species to conceive and give birth in space. Can early human development proceed in space? We don't know yet. But I'm going to give you three arguments showing why is it so important to overcome this challenge. First argument, to ensure human survival. Catastrophic impacts, atmospheric shifts, resource depletion, amid other threats may preclude human existence on Earth. Solutions supporting human development and reproduction in space need to be found. Second argument, to develop the next evolutionary stages. It seems clear that the human body has evolved through space and time as an active organic machine. In fact, during millions of years, hominids needed to move in order to survive. Hunter-gatherers were physically active. For example, they had to walk and run long distances to get food, elude and hunt predators, and they were nomadic. In some, they have to face an environment in constant mutation. Hunter-gatherers presented multiple structural and functional body changes compared to apes. In effect, major biological changes or evolution in hominids happen due to interactions with challenging physical environments. Space environments are novel and challenging to humans. They will cause different formats of biological stress. For instance, via differences in gravitational loads and biospheres. Hence, they are ideal to potentiate biological evolution. Can early human development proceed in space? We don't know yet. We don't know, but I'm going to give you now the argument why this is so important. Major biological changes happen during early human development. Structural and functional changes. A phenomenon also known as plasticity, or the ability of a given genotype to produce different phenotypes in response to different environments. Because plasticity is more prominent during early human development, it may be that key adaptations to space environments also occur at this point of time, generating adjustments in the human phenotype across generations, novel traits, and thus increasing survival and reproductive success in such environments. Trait variability is the leading edge of evolution, in most cases associated with genetic change and speciation. Third argument, why for early human development in space to create new ways to perceive the universe? Perception concerns the identification and interpretation of sensory information in order to represent and understand the environment. According to embodied cognition, animal species generate perception according to their body structure. For instance, it is expected for a human and a crocodile to perceive the environment or a chair differently because they present different body structures. A chair, like you are sitting right now, suggests the action of seating for most humans because they possess a flexible torso and hip joints. A crocodile will probably not notice it or even destroy it with its sharp teeth. Our physiological nature also determines how perception emerges in relation to space. For example, morphology of cortical synapses determines or influences information processing speed. Mars gravity is one-third of gravity on Earth. 
Possibly we will develop more elongated bodies beyond other biological transformations that will change the way we perceive the surrounding physical environment. Biological changes such as exaptation processes or new sensory skills or new organs that will change the way we perceive universal properties, the universe properties. I use a metaphor to describe this late idea. It is called universal cognition or the echo of the multiverse. Now, how to turn theory into reality? How can we facilitate early human adaptation to space? Successful early human adaptation to space may imply the following general premises. One, allowing for conception to occur in space because major biological changes happen during early human development. Two, allowing for developmental processes to proceed in space in an adaptive biological transient format. I created a new concept uh, termed adaptive biological robotics. Adaptive biological robotics aim at facilitating human adaptation to severe environmental conditions by smoothing changes in human biology. That is, true gradual biological adaptation. The main principle under this theory is that human adaptation to space should occur in a transient format, with humans transiting from artificially controlled environments simulating the Earth's biosphere to the new space environment in order for proper and safe biological adaptation to occur. How is this achieved? Biosynthetic robotic systems that disrupt stable homeostatic states in humans. This is creating significant disruptions in the human body physiological states via environmental pressure. Here is a conceptual example. It is termed automated bioplacentas or biospheres. This concept has bionics as a foundation. I inspire myself in biological placentas, whose function is to support a, fet a fetus inside a mother's womb, supporting beyond other functions for gas exchange, thermoregulation, and waste elimination. In a similar fashion, biospheres allow for exchange on chemical elements between or present in the cosmic body's atmosphere and the biological or biosphere uh, where humans reside. This is the space habitat via an artificial plasmatic membrane, as you can see in this picture in red, allowing, for example, for changes in thermoregulation where temperatures inside the biosphere may vary by more than 30 centigrades. We know that when temperatures rise by more than 30 uh, centigrades, living organisms struggle to maintain homeostasis. Another example is via gas exchange. For instance, in Mars, humans could adapt to support uh, higher concentrations of carbon dioxide, a phenomenon well known in Earth populations living at high altitudes that can adapt to different gas concentrations. Another example on how to facilitate early human development adaptation to space concerns to biosynthetic robots. We know that Homeostatic states vary from individual to individual. This is each one of you at his own individual bioprints. Biosynthetic robots, as you can see in this picture, aim at facilitating individual adaptation to space environments, while at the same time allowing you humans 
to explore planetary surfaces. How is this achieved? Detection of environmental features together with detection of the body's physiological states allows for these robots to instill disruptions in the human's physiological functions via communications with actuators integrated in the human biosuit that allows for disconnections and connections with the physical uh, environment, again, via a plasmatic membrane that covers the suit, hence allowing for significant environmental pressure to occur, thus gradual individual biological adaptation. According to evolutionary biologists, species with a relatively fixed phenotype may not be able to respond sufficiently quickly in order to survive an unexpected environmental change. I conclude with the following questions. Will humans that live in constant physical environments be able to contribute to trait variability, the leading edge of evolution? Will those humans be able to perceive and understand universe or multiverse properties? I leave this exercise of thought for you to contemplate.